Everyone knows that school buses are equipped with a variety of different mirrors for the driver to use when viewing the area around the bus. But what most people don't know is that an alarming number of drivers don't have their mirrors adjusted properly. Consequently, they're not seeing areas around the bus which are critical for safe operation. As mirror manufacturers, we are faced with this growing problem on a daily basis. We test our mirror systems to the federal standards, just like the bus bodybuilders do. But unfortunately, we regularly see buses operating with these same mirrors out of adjustment. So we've decided to make a video which explains the contents of the federal standards governing school bus mirror systems. This video will also provide guidelines and procedures for you, the school bus operator, to make sure that your drivers have their mirrors adjusted properly. To ensure that the content of this program accurately covers this issue, we've asked Dick Fisher, a noted authority on school bus operations and safety instructions, to assist and advise us. Dick has been in school transportation for over 40 years and has been giving seminars worldwide to school bus safety instructors since 1977. We've posed some questions to Dick in order to give us some background on this issue. What is the most dangerous area around a school bus? There are uh, many areas around the school bus that are dangerous. The most dangerous part uh, is in f directly in front of the bus, and that is when the youngsters load and unload who must cross the roadway in front of the bus. In the last 25 years, there have been 415 students killed in front of the school bus, which means 415 youngsters have been run over by the bus itself. Do some drivers have a larger blind area in front of the bus? Yes, there is, uh, because some drivers are taller, some drivers are shorter, and some drivers sit lower in the seat, the driver's seat, some sit higher in the driver's seat. By adding those two factors, we have a larger blind area in front of the bus. Some drivers can have up to 25 feet blind area. In our video today, we will show you a grid that can any school district or contractor may use to set up in their yard to show any driver the blind area in front of the bus, and then it could adjust the mirrors properly to see within their own uh, blind area. Can this video be used as a complete manual for proper mirror adjustment? No, this video is intended mainly to, to show you that there is a dangerous area in front of the vehicle. The training programs you have in your school district or your operation needs to be more in depth uh, regarding the mirror use, when to use the mirrors, how to use the mirrors, what to see in the mirror as far as a, an object. And this is only a small part of that type of operation in your training program. School bus mirror systems have evolved considerably since the development of the 8-inch convex mirror and tripod in 1954. Breakaway and swiveling mirror arms have become necessary features due to the high cost of fender and body repair, as well as mirror replacements. But the broad range of adjustments means that mirrors are constantly being moved. How can the operator make sure that his mirrors are properly adjusted? To arrive at the solution to this problem, let's take a look at how FMVSS 111 testing is performed. A series of one-foot-high cylinders are placed around the bus in accordance with figure two in the standard. Nine cylinders are located in front of the bus with seven additional cylinders on the sides. These cylinders need to be seen by the driver either through direct line of sight or indirectly via his mirrors. As you know, the mirrors are divided into two separate systems the cross view system in front of the bus and the rear view or side view system on the sides. The cross view system needs to show the tops of the front nine cylinders as well as the cylinders by the front wheels and the three foot high outermost cylinder by the right rear wheel. This cylinder needs to be seen by the cross view system with certain image size constraints which are beyond the scope of this video. The bus bodybuilder 
has already confirmed those image sizes, and you, the operator, need not reconfirm them. The rear view system is required to show the tops of the four cylinders nearest to the rear wheels, as well as 200 feet behind the vehicle. If it's possible that the mirrors may be moved each day, the average operator may wonder how to determine if the mirrors are giving the proper coverage on a daily basis. Actually, it's quite simple. The cylinders are not needed. All that is needed is a simple grid painted on the ground in the bus yard. We'll show you how to do that. Just mark off the locations of the cylinders as shown graphically on the chart that came with this video. We have added some additional markings. These spots, painted in red, are important because they are in between the FMVSS 111 rows. In a Type A bus, the driver can see the row of spots at 12 feet without using his mirrors. But he may not see the row of red spots at 9 feet. This is part of his danger zone, or blind area. He needs to make sure that his mirrors cover that area, even if FMVSS 111 doesn't have a row of cylinders at 9 feet. Also, we have added additional rows of spots, painted blue, at both 15 and 18 feet in front of the bus. These are similarly important, because, as Dick Fisher mentioned, in a Type C or conventional school bus, the driver's danger zone, or blind area, in front of the bus actually extends out to almost 18 feet. Even though a school bus cross-view mirror system will be compliant to FMVSS 111, if it covers the ground 12 feet in front of the bus, many of today's cross-view systems can be adjusted to show 18 feet out as well. If you are concerned that FMVSS 111 requires that the tops of the cylinders, not painted spots on the ground, be seen in the mirrors, you need not worry. These cylinders are one foot high. It is actually more difficult to see ground level. If you paint one foot circles on the ground at the same locations and they are visible in the mirrors, then you would definitely also be able to see one foot above the ground. The basic grid should be painted in a bright color, but the rows of spots in front of the bus painted in several different bright colors. This will help the driver distinguish between the spots and determine if all are seen. Each time a bus leaves the yard, the driver should pull up to the grid and check that he sees the grid in his mirrors. The spots by the rear wheels should be painted in a different color for each bus type. This way, a driver can recognize his grid immediately, whether he is driving a Type A bus, Type C, or Type D bus. If adjustment is needed, it can be determined at the grid and remedied right away. No mirrors can be substituted for good judgment or training. In addition, Cross-view mirrors diminish the size of an image considerably. No matter how small an object appears in the mirror, do not move the bus until you investigate it further. As always, there can be no substitute for proper driver training. The contents of this video are intended for use only as suggested guidelines. If these guidelines are followed, operators and districts can rest assured that their drivers are seeing the proper field of view around the bus.